and welcome back to this series JavaScript for testers. I'm Bushra and you can connect with me through these platforms. In the last video we learned what npm is and in this video we'll be learning about package.json. I highly recommend watching the previous video in order to fully grasp the contents of this video. And in case you haven't subscribed to the channel, you must consider doing that to stay updated with what's hot in testing world. So let's start with package.json. Well, it's a JSON format file that resides at the root of your project and it holds various metadata relevant to your project. So a package.json file provides these benefits. It lists the packages your project depends on and then it specifies the version of those packages that your project can use. And finally, it makes your build reproducible and therefore easier to share with other developers. So let's now understand these points clearly. Let's say you have created a project and your project has some dependencies, you know, like it depends on other packages. Reuse what is available, remember? Now, let's say you need to share this project with others. So you give them a copy of your project. But your project won't run all by itself because it depends on other packages. So you'll have to give them those packages as well. Now the thing is, these packages are huge and they are anyway available in npm repository. So you don't really want to be passing on these packages. They should be able to download it from npm themselves. But you would need to tell them what packages your project depends on. So what you do is, you create a package.json file in your project. This file would contain a list of all the packages that your project depends on and also the required version of these packages. And now, when you share your project, you would no longer need to share these dependencies. You can simply share the package.json file and they'll have to run a simple command and they would get these dependencies in the project. So that's the ease package.json provides. Now let's go ahead and create a package.json in our project. Open your project in VS Code and then open a terminal. Make sure you are in the project directory and then run npm in it. It will prompt us to input a few things. So it's asking for a name. That's the project name. You can give your project a name. The value in the bracket is a default value. Let's go with the default value. So I'll just hit enter. Next, we have, we have the project's initial version. Hit enter to select default. Description. Let's put in a description. And then it goes on to ask a few more things. Let's just go with defaults for now. So hit enter, 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 enter. And it's asking for confirmation. Enter to confirm. And it creates a package.json file here with the values that we provided. Now, if answering the prompt seems too much of a hassle to you, then what you can do is, let's first delete this. And now with npm in it, you can pass a flag, hyphen, hyphen, yes, or simply hyphen y and hit enter. And again, we have got a package.json. So now with this flag, it takes the default values and creates the package.json for you. And you can do the changes here if you want to. Let's now see what package.json contains. So name, version, description, these are self-explanatory. Then we have main, which is the entry point for your application. Scripts, this is an interesting one. So if you have these long commands to execute or test your code, you can write those commands here. 
and then simply run them using npm run and the name of your script. Like to run our file o one basics, we were using the command node and the name of the file. So what we can do is we can create a script for that. I'll remove this. We'll call it basics. And then we give the command. You can even skip the .js here. Save it. And now to run our script, we need to use the command npm run and the name of the script that is basics. Oops, I didn't write npm there. And our file got executed. So the benefit it provides is that you don't have to remember the commands. And here the command was very simple. At times they are long and really difficult to remember. That's when scripts come handy. Okay, now we said package.json stores the list of dependencies. Let's add some package and see what package.json does. I'll clear this. So to install a package, the command is npm install and the name of the package. Have you heard of Mocha? Well, it's a JavaScript test framework. Let's install it. So we write npm install Mocha. Mocha is the name of our package. And hit enter. Now let's see what all things have happened on running this command. The first thing is in package.json, Mocha has been added as a dependency. That tells everyone that our project requires Mocha package to run successfully. And it also specifies the version for it. We'll be discussing these versions in a bit. Next, a new folder has been added node modules let's see what's inside it whoa so down here we have got mocha that means mocha package has been downloaded for us and is available for use in this project but what are these other files well there are packages that mocha in turn depends on and what those packages depend on and so on you see, so the dependencies are brought along with the package that you install. And fair enough, otherwise the package won't work. Now, notes module folder is never committed to git. That is, you never share your node modules folder. And that's the whole point of creating package.json file, right? Now, the third thing that has happened is, we have got this new file package log.json. So like our package.json file defines what, what our project depends on and the version of those dependencies. Similarly, package log.json specifies the list of dependencies for each of those packages and the required versions. So we had installed Mocha. It's a dependency for our project. Now in package log.json file, if we search for Mocha, here, it shows the list of packages that Mocha depends on and their versions. Package log.json file is committed to git. So when you install a package, three things happen. An entry is made in package.json the packages and its dependencies are downloaded in the notes module folder here and finally package log.json file makes entry of all the dependencies of packages installed and their versions okay so now let's talk a little about versions so semantic versioning or semware 
is a versioning system that is followed. The versions defined by Semver consist of three parts major, minor, and patch. Patch is updated when some bug fixes are done. Minor version is updated when some minor changes are done, like some new functionality is added. Major version is updated when API level changes are done. Patch and minor version updates are backwards compatible, that is, they are not breaking changes. But major version updates are not backwards compatible and hence are breaking changes. Meaning, your code working with previous major version could fail and thus you need to update your code. Now, you could have a tilde sign before your version. And that means you want to only update patch. So this would work because we are updating patch here. But this won't work because we are updating the minor version. You could also have a caret sign which means you want to update patch and minor releases. So updating patch is fine. And updating minor version is fine as well. And finally, you could have none of those signs prepended to your version. And that means you want exactly that version and nothing else would do. Now if we check our package.json file, our dependency mocha has version 7.1. Point two, and it is prepended with a caret. So if I share my project with you and you try to install the dependencies present in my package.json, then you might get an updated patch or minor version. And because patch and minor version updates are backwards compatible, so you can rest assured that the code would work without any issue. Now if I share my project with you, I will share everything except for my node modules folder. Now you'll have to install all the dependencies that are listed in my package.json. So for doing that, there's a simple command that is npm install. npm install would install all the dependencies listed in package.json. Now there might be some packages that are necessary only while development and not necessary for the production build. These are dev dependencies. To install a dev dependency, we need to use the flag hyphen hyphen save hyphen dev along with npm install command. Let's install chai as a dev dependency. Chai is an assertion library. So, the packages that are installed using hyphen hyphen save hyphen dev flag are added under the dev dependencies list. Now, let's quickly go through the commands we have learned in this video. To create package.json, you simply run npm init or npm init hyphen y in the project directory. NPM init would prompt you to input values for name, version, description and so on. Whereas npm init hyphen y would create the package.json file with the default values. Then we saw how to run scripts in package.json. The benefit of scripts is that you don't have to remember the long commands. Now this is important. To install any package, we use npm install and the name of the package. Then if you picked up someone else's project and do not have the dependencies, then simply run npm install and that would install all the dependencies listed in package.json file. And finally, to install any package as dev dependency, you need to use the flag hyphen hyphen save hyphen dev. So I hope you learned something through this video. 
see you on the next video and before that do like share and subscribe to the channel